Thank you and welcome everybody. Good evening to uh, the Williamsport City Council meeting of Thursday, September 9th, 2020. 2021 is uh, 7 p.m. and we're meeting remotely. Um, I just need to announce that uh, Councilman Polizzi will be absent tonight and we'll get right into the agenda. <clears throat> Item number one, approval of City Council minutes dated 8-12-21 and the special meeting minutes of 8.30.21. Is there a motion and a second from council? So moved. Move. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, questions, corrections, anything else from council? Uh, hearing none, Mrs. Franklin, the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Is she I not? I can't see. I don't her. think she's here. Okay. Ms. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We'll move to item two limited courtesy of the floor. Uh, there's been no request tonight. Um, I can't see part of my screen is uh, now it's all disappeared. <laughs> I'm having technical difficulties here. Bear with me for a minute. It's the storm, Randy. <laughs> um, okay, I got you now. Uh, Councilwoman Mealy's here. Uh, yep. So, uh, Mayor Slaughter, do you want us to move ahead and Wait till you can. Sure, you can. You can keep going. We should be. Uh, it should be very soon here. So okay. if you don't mind, thank you. Okay, we'll move down to item six, which is a real estate refund. Mrs. Frank, can you read that resolution in short form, please? Real estate refund in the amount of four hundred forty-one dollars and ninety-eight cents. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, Mr. Grimes could not be here tonight. Our treasurer. Um, so he asked if I would fill in in his place. Uh, very briefly, um, this is a uh, parcel at 531 West 4th Street in Williamsport. Uh, the owner was out of town and unfortunately, tragically, uh, was his life was taken from him. Um, it was in uh, court for about a year before it was placed in the hands of, uh, of his relatives to close out his estate. In that time, of course, the taxes weren't paid um, and there were penalties assessed. And he appealed to uh, the treasurer's office to have those penalties. Dis the taxes were then paid. They paid the taxes in full, but they're petitioning to have the uh, penalties removed. and. Uh, Due to the, uh, normally uh, we don't consider these things. We don't want to open that door um, because how do you uh, close it again? But these are extraordinarily um, unique and tragic circumstances. Uh, we've received uh, several pages of documentation of all the things that occurred in court and out of court. So, um, uh, everything's documented and uh, tonight we're going to vote on that. Is there a motion and a second from council on this? So, so moved. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Um, this was reviewed in finance probably a month ago or so. Um, Councilwoman Mealy, would you care to address it or is everything pretty well -covered? Uh, Randy, I, I, I'll actually be abstaining on this um, item because the, the gentleman in question was a neighbor of mine um, when okay. I was on West 4th Street, uh, and I'm, I, I, I know the family, and I, I, didn't, I didn't want to, um, to vote on it. Um, so I would defer to other members of the Finance Committee if they have anything that they'd like to add to that about that discussion. Councilman uh, Yoder. Yeah, um, you, you pretty much summed everything up, and uh, 
you know, when we discussed this in finance, we generally agreed and uh, given the excruciating circumstance. So um, I, I think we were on the same page as uh, Treasurer Grimes and everything that you had discussed, President Allison, and uh, we were in agreement. Okay. Um, great. Unless anybody else has anything to say, we'll have the vote, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Uh, I've seen. Excuse me, Janice. Jeez. Thanks. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes uh, five yeses, uh, zero nays, and one abstention. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, we'll move to uh, item seven. Would you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution to approve a CDBG-CY multipurpose public service project. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and second from council? So move. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, this was uh, reviewed in finance. Um, or would any of the finance committee members? Randy, if I could speak up, I think with the discussion that we had, I think we still had a lot of questions and I would like to make a motion to table this item. Is there a second on that? I'll second, second. that. There's a motion and a second for a table. Um, and uh, we'll have, I'll ask for the vote, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Motion is tabled. Uh, we'll move to item eight. Would you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution awarding a 2021 contract for street line paving and bituminous seal coating for city. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and second? To move. Second. Second. Great. Moved and seconded. Mr. Winder, welcome tonight. Good evening. Um, this is our annual resolution. Um, as you're all aware, we team up with uh, the Oh my gosh, the uh, West Branch COG to um, do a lot of our bidding, our aggregates, um, line painting, um, tar and chip, um, different items like that. Um, this is to award the two bids, one for the street line painting to Mid-Atlantic Marking Incorporated, the amount of $13,437.03. <laughs> Um, the other would be for tar and chipping to Russell Standard Corporation, the amount of $26,998.27. Um, Mid-Atlantic has always, for the last several years, done our line painting. Russell Standard was recently purchased. Um, the company that used to do our seal or our, uh, tar and chip, um, this is nothing out of the ordinary. It's um, bid through... PennDOT, um, Greg Dibble, our liquid fuels coordinator, actually oversees all this. Um, as I said, it's an annual thing. The cost from last year, yeah, from last year to this year went up approximately 3%. It is budgeted. It was reviewed in finance and passed forward with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Winder. Uh, was reviewed in finance. Councilwoman Mealy? Uh, yes, this item was reviewed in finance and um, really, Randy, we had very little discussion on it. Um, we, you know, this happens every year. I, I think the the only real question that, that we have was was one of mine, and it was related to. Um, I I asked Mr. Winder uh, if he could come up with a cost for us to add um, painting bike lanes on certain streets in the city into this contract for this year. He he said that he would work on that. Um, that's something that I think we could do with ARPA funds. Um, we could do it quite inexpensively. Um, and, and something that I thought we should look into. Um, that was about it for the discussion. I'll defer to other members of finance if they recollect something that I've forgotten. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Mealy. Um, anything else from members of finance? I don't have anything, Randy. Okay, thank you. Any other council members? 
Thank you. Uh, we'll have the vote then, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. <clears throat> we'll move to item nine. Would you read that in short form, please? Resolution approving change order number one for the Bowman Field scoreboard project. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second from council? So moved. Oh, second. Moved and seconded. Mr. Sander. Welcome. Yes. Yes. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> so what you, have, what you have before you is a resolution for uh, change order one for the Bowman Field scoreboard project. Project That construction uh, for that project is starting next week. What I'm looking for is a uh, monies for a new steel foundation in the amount of $64,155. The new steel foundation was designed and designed and stamped by a professional engineer from uh, the Dactronics utilized. Uh, cur currently we're under contract with Dactronics for $629,000 for the scoreboard. School board has been manufactured and they're looking to install it uh, possibly two or three weeks from now. Um, the issue, I brought this to uh, finance earlier this week and the one major, major item was um, budget for this. Uh, currently we don't, we're not budgeted for this extra $64,155. So that was one issue item of contention. Um, I rec, I, me and myself and Joe Pollock went through the entire uh, city budget line item by line item, couldn't find anything. Um, this does fall under the realm of uh, our rescue plan monies. However, uh, in discussions with the mayor and, uh, and uh, Skip Mimi, Skip thought he had a better option to fund to fund the, the uh, foundation. And if Skip's on, I don't know if you're on, Skip, if you could chime in. Um, we could possibly um, fund it using CDBG funds. I can't commit to that tonight because I need to do a, an analysis to make sure that that is an appropriate use of those funds, but, but if council wants me to proceed down that line, I can do that. Uh, I, it'll take some time. I, I guess the issue for John is, is timeliness for him to get the project completed before winter hits and all those kinds of things. So, but there is a possibility that CDBG funds could be used. We will get a hold of our consultant and and, and discuss it if that's the direction council chooses. Hey, uh, thank you, Skip and John. Um, this was reviewed in finance. Yes, Randy, this item was reviewed by the finance committee and um, uh, a handful of points. Yeah, we, um, we understand the situation. I think Mrs. Katz even saluted John Sander because the original uh, quote, can you guys hear me? Sorry, yes. uh, the, the, okay. The original, uh, the original estimate that we had for a new foundation for the scoreboard um, was around $150,000. And as you'll note, um, we've, we've achieved a, a substantial savings on that item. Um, the, the, the dollar amount to, to do it at this point is, is substantially lower than that. Um, the, the only issue the finance committee really had with this work, which obviously needs to move forward. Um, we've put a, we've put a lot of time and a lot of effort into the, the scoreboard project so far. We have committed to providing a new scoreboard for Bowman field. Um, and, um, and given that it's already been manufactured, et cetera, et cetera, the, the foundation is can't, can't really hold the project back at this point. Um, we, we merely took issue with the fact that the administration had not taken the time to um, find a funding source aside from the uh, aside from from trying to use the the ARPA funding, we know that we that we have received a portion of our um, American Rescue Plan Act funding. Um, we know that we will eventually receive the remainder. Uh, 
we know that that recreation is one of the items that falls under that funding. However, we've committed as a council and an administration to not expending that funding until we've developed a plan for, for the funding and what we'd like to do with it. And, um, and the finance committee felt that, that, the, uh, that it was the administration's responsibility to find that funding elsewhere um, until such a time as, we, as we'd really made a full plan for this. Um, so uh, so if, if indeed we can use um, community development block grant funding, I think that would make the finance committee much more comfortable with this item. I defer to other members, but the majority of our discussion around it was, was simply that, that, we, that we needed to find the funding within the existing city budget. And, uh, and however, however that needs to happen. Um, uh, you know, uh, if um, I suppose, you know, this of course is not really the purview of city council finding finding the money to cover items the administration brings to us um, is, is the responsibility of the administration. Um, over, overseeing the way in which the city spends its funds is, is the purview of council. Um, but, uh, but if it were to require assistance, if the administration couldn't take this on itself, um, you know, I, I'm sure the members of the finance committee could, could help in this particular instance if absolutely necessary. Um, I, I'd prefer not to go that route. Um, but uh, so I'm happy to see that, that Skip has stepped up to the table and, and might be able to provide funding for this item. Uh, I will defer to other members of finance who might have some other comments on this. Thanks, Randy. You're welcome, uh, Councilwoman and Mealy. Um, I was able to listen to finance um, over the phone um, on Tuesday. So um, I'm pretty familiar with, with uh, all the situations, uh, most of what was covered in finance. So uh, other finance, Committee members, Mr. Yori, you had your hand up. Yeah, I'll just, I mean, uh, Ms. Mealy summed it up very eloquently. Um, the only thing I was going to say was I just, I, I'm more comfortable going the route and I'd thank Skip for um, working with John and identifying that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, um, John, I don't know what kind of time crunch, um, you know, this change order is under. Um, I'd be comfortable um tabling this and waiting two weeks to give skip ample time to perform his analysis and what have you um and bring it back in two weeks just to make sure that we are okay using that um additionally you know that may give you a little bit more time to um look look at look through other channels as well so that's the only thing i would add to uh, miss mealy's comments there is there is they are starting construction next week uh I'm being as honest as I can be. So delaying it at least two weeks could be, could be uh, troublesome. Could be trouble. There's nothing in the general scope of work that we previously approved that they can start on over the, over the first couple of weeks. Um, uh, yeah, there possibly, yeah, I see, there is, I mean, there's going to be running conduit, running wire, okay. uh, but one of the, their very first thing they're going, the very first thing the contractor plans to do is, is demolish and take down the existing scoreboard. And then in it, simultaneously start installing the new one, which is 18 foot deep uh, pile foundations with, uh, with steel in them. So. Okay. Yeah, that, those are just my thoughts. I'd defer other members of council. Let's, I appreciate the info across the board. Yep. <laughs> Councilwoman Kat. Yes, I, you know, there are so many times that things like this come to us and, and it's always a time crunch. And it really is a shame that, you know, everybody's put in this position uh, to go off track for two seconds here. John, is this sure. is, is the scoreboard going in the same place as the old scoreboard? No, no. The new, actually, hold on for one second. No, the new scoreboard is going in left center. Uh, okay. Time crunch wise, I did notify count all seven council members on 524, 525, 86, 816, 820 and 831 of this issue. I'm just letting you guys know that's May 24th, May 25th. August 6th, August 16th, August 20th, and August 31st. The I reason, the reason, bear with you one moment. Okay, Bonnie, gotcha. The reason I couldn't take it to council was, was because of the Little League World Series law. That was the reason I had, I had to wait till today. So. so the new scoreboard, to answer your question directly, Bonnie, the new scoreboard is going into left center, uh, which is su more suitable for the cross cutters as there's no glare with the sun setting in the west. Um, that's... Uh, that's where they wanted it up uh, originally anyway, so. I just wanted to clarify that for the public because, you know, people, there, have, there have been questions about that. Um, yes, I, we, we 
got your emails and understood where you were coming from with all of this. And it just, uh, it's it's not up to us to go find the funding. It really isn't. It's it's up to the administration to bring the funding to us. And this is where the problem comes in. And I think this is where Adam and, and Liz are coming from. And I think I know that's where the discussion was. And uh, you right now, John, we're using and talking to you because so many times these incidents do happen. And we want the administration to be aware that we feel they should be more responsible and looking for things, okay? Mm -hmm. Not us, we should not have to go looking. Mm -hmm. I did bring two viable options to you. I know you did, John. <laughs> yeah, and, and if I may. Well, we... Go ahead, go ahead, Councilman. Oh, all I was going to say, um, Skip, is we, we, you, you brought one non-viable option and one potential option. So all we're waiting to do is see whether the potential option could iron out. Um, to, to, your, to your point, John, just, just so we're clear from an administrative versus council perspective, the, the administration has known since May that it would need to fund an, a foundation for Bowman Field. Mm -hmm. um, and the administration has not found the funding. So, so I've, I've known since May that we were putting a new foundation on the field. I expected when the item came that we would have a source for the funds within our existing budget. Um, that, that's, that's, uh, that, that was all I wanted to add. Bonnie, I'm sorry I, I uh, broke in there and skipped. Sorry for interrupting you. There you go. Um, no, no, not at all. I was finished. Like the orthopedic surgeon on Thursday. Well, if I could, I, I take a little offense to that. I take a little offense to be quite honest, because as we all know, since January 2020, when I took over, there's been issues with the finances. So when we look at the finances, they're not exactly as they appear to be. And we know since shortly after of January 2020 that there's been an attorney general's investigation. I sent it immediately to DA Ryan Gardner because I had concerns over the finances, he sent it directly to the attorney general's office. So when we're trying to go through the budget, it's difficult when I don't even know what money we're working with. So I take great offense to that when everybody, almost everybody, if not everybody on this call right now, knows what we've been dealing with related to the finances. So to try to say that the administration can't find the money, part of it is we don't have a 2019 audit, we don't have a 2020 audit, and a lot of that is because of the fact that we have yet to even understand and untangle the financial issues that we are facing. We so we're doing the best we can on the administrative side. Beyond that, until we have a 2019 audit, until the investigation is finished up, and I don't wanna to say too much because I don't wanna jeopardize this investigation, but I take grave offense to that, to say that administration is known since May and we cannot find where the money's coming from. Of course we can't, because when we're looking at finances, they've been all co-mingled and done so much with, that we can't determine what is what. I mean, I apologize, I'm in a hospital right now because my daughter has a broken wrist, but I take offense to that to say that the administration is not doing their diligence when we've been nothing but diligent and bringing stuff to council given the extreme circumstances we've been working under. Derek, can I break in please? Go ahead. Derek, okay, thanks. So, okay, if, if you were somehow or another at home financially under investigation for X, does that mean that you wouldn't pay your electric bill? First off, I wouldn't be under financial investigation at home. So I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Tomorrow will be a lot better. I think it was yeah, I, I would, I would try not to either, Derek. None of us wants to be under investigation. My point is, so, my point is that you cannot, you can't default on all of your financial obligations because you're having one financial issue. But that one financial issue is related to everything because the money we're looking at, I don't know what we're looking at. I, I understand that's that, the point I'm everybody feels somewhat the same way. My point is that we have to continue to run a city despite this issue. So then we and, should be and, working you know, hand and, in hand, not all, saying that exactly. the administration's not doing their job. You're saying that we can't well, do it. You understand what we're, what we're dealing with. So you should, what should have, the way it should have been presented is that given the circumstances we're under, we're doing the best we can to try to find this money. That's great, Derek. What I'm saying is we've known since May that we needed to find this money and we still don't have it. And it right, because- If, if it was going is, to be an issue, it would have been nice for the administration to come to us well, a couple of months ago and say, hey, you we don't have this is, money. The, the, uh, that's the, can what you help we, us figure this do, out? You can wait here, can you stop? I'll take the All right, thanks. What we, and that's okay. what we can't, we did come to you and say that. 
That's exactly what we did. We said, here's an option right here. You don't want that option. So then we, we emailed and said, we're open to ideas because we're under obviously extreme circumstances that everybody's aware of. So that's exactly what we did do. And now you're saying the administration didn't do their due diligence. We're saying to you, you can't get blood from a stone. And we, without the audits, without you're everything- You're saying to me, what, I, we, what we, need, we need this approved today. You're saying to me, we so, need this approved today. We told you right. yesterday, we didn't know where the funding was. But you knew before. Sure. What we're saying is you knew all the financial issues. So to try to say somehow this is related to us, no, it's not. Eric, it is your job. I'm sorry, exactly man. I'm it's not my job. To be a jerk here. It saying, is your job. Right. And how it's many not my job to tell you where the money is coming from. And how many times have we sat down and said, Liz, and you've been sat in those meetings saying that the money is all messed up. You know that. Don't try and sit and act like you don't know. Derek, you know I know that. that. But I know, I know that if I owe money for a whole friggin' house, okay, and I don't know where that's coming from, it doesn't mean I don't pay my electric bill. But what it, say, what it does mean is that I can't just pull money from some random place that there's no money there. When I look at that account and they're saying, actually, some of that money in that account should have never been there. So you can't do that either. What I'm saying to you is, I don't know what we're going to do with this money. That's what I'm saying. Because every account I look at, they're like, oh, no, that's messed up. Oh, no, that's messed up, too. Oh, that's messed up, too. So what I'm coming well, to you and saying is, well, I don't there, have an if, option. If that's right the now. case within the city's budget then you have not disclosed that to me and I have not tried to help. Oh, come on. Go, oh, come on, Liz. Stop. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, thanks, Randy. Please cut it off. Yeah, yeah um, please stop it. Yeah, because this is getting, come on, stop. We're not, we're not getting anywhere. So, um, uh, and I appreciate everybody's perspective on this. I, I think we're all, there's a lot of, I, I, it, My daughter's being discharged right now, so I'm, I'll sign back on as soon as I get home. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, this whole uh, project started, what, three years ago? Uh, and it's been a Herculean task to work through it, even under the best of circumstances, when we knew what all the finances were. Uh, the, the previous minister administration um fumbled the bids twice that'd be um, pardon me so fumbled the bids twice um which delayed everything um there were uh discussions about uh, what we were going to do and and one of the problems is um that um, <clears throat> Senator Yaw went to bat for the city and went to bat for uh, Bowman Field to get this in to the RACB and get the grant for the city and uh, lobbied hard for it with the governor and, and we were able to get the money. Um, once we accepted that, we, for all intents and purposes, we committed to finishing the project. Um, legally, no, we could have walked away from it, but we would have put ourselves in a, a terrible situation uh, as far as our credibility as a city and as a, a, a governmental institution and as elected officials. Um, so it, it is very, very troubling, I think, to everybody at the last minute um, under all kinds of duress and different circumstances that, that are all legitimate. But at the same time, um, we, we've needed to find a solution to funding this. Um, I, I guess my only point is, not my only point, but... Um, what I'm focused on is there are a lot of extenuating circumstances with this particular bid um, with all the way through that have made it very difficult. And we're, we're maybe it's, it, it's not the best practice all the time, but I, I really feel like we're going to have to work together to get this done. 
at the end to bring it across the finish line. Um, and, and then going forward, uh, yes, we can, um, we can set some parameters and, and other things. I, I would, my, my personal preference is, is that we, we pass this, but that we ask the administration to come up with the funding plan, uh, ASAP, and th there may be uh, other options other than, than what's been mentioned so far, uh, besides CDBG money um, um, and ARPA money. Uh, once <laughs> things are, are, you know, once it's put on the front burner and, and really cooked. Um, I think we may be- Randy, uh, one, one minor item, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to mention, there was a lull between May and August that where the Dactronics was actually designing it. So it took time took time for them to co compile the design and actually yeah. to, to, to get me what they needed, what I needed to ask you guys. So I wasn't trying, I wasn't holding it. As soon as I got it, I gave it to you. So I apologize, I, couldn't, I can't do anything about that design time. So I just, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, I, I think we're all we're all frustrated. There's no doubt about it, and it's legitimate. Um, but we need to get this done. That's just my perspective from being in on it from the beginning, and and the twists and turns it's taken. So I'll, I'll just leave it that at that. They got a grant um, from the state, and they used the money for other stuff, probably. Pardon me. Who said that? That's a gentleman by the name of James. I'm sorry. Epler. That's, I'm sorry. That's the first thing I said. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I never did Zoom. I'm sorry. Okay. I, you, you. I was wrong. All right. <laughs> the money was not used for something else. That's out in the public now. So I'm going to uh, vehemently... Uh, correct that right now and right here. The money's been uh, public and everything about this project's been public. Um, you can mute yourself. Um, other council members, do you have uh, comments? Randy, just if could I chime in not to start any more fights? I swear to God, I'm off, I'm off my <laughs> high horse now. It's um, not a fight. It's and, a and, and Derek, I, I, I apologize for getting into it with you. Um, I, I'm sorry. It was a poor choice of timing. I just uh, got a little worked up there. Um, but uh, but to, to to clarify the funding matrix for Bowman Field a little bit, we received a $600,000 grant from the state for the scoreboard. The scoreboard has now gone significantly over that amount of money. So if we were... Um, looking at the question of whether or not we had misspent funds at Bowman Field, that would be a completely inaccurate statement. The truth of the matter is that, the, the, that what with needing a new foundation, um, what with the increasing costs of electronics, as we all know, um, and the increasing cost of materials at this point as well, um, with the, the, the original amount of funding that we had for that scoreboard simply isn't quite sufficient to cover it. Um, so, sorry, Randy, just wanted to put out some numbers there so that we were, so that, we were all on the same page. Thanks. Thanks, Liz. Mr. Banks? I just want to clarify what's being proposed tonight um, is that we, we pass this. Um, if we were to pass this, we would be in the interim saying we're going to use ARPA funding while we wait for CDBG money to be possibly open up. Is that, is that, is that correct? I'm, I can't speak to that. It's, um, uh, is there anybody from the administration that can answer that question? If I were to chime in, Randy, Dave, I would say that we pass this with the understanding that we will not use ARPA funding and that it will have to come back to us for another vote if ARPA funding is the only option the administration can find. But that, but that they can move forward with either CDBG funding or another administrative source within the next few weeks on the item. Okay. Personally, that would be what I would say. 
Liz, Dave, but, um, sorry to cut you but, off. Um, I, I agree with that. Do we want to amend the motion to, to, to formally do that? Um, Adam, the only thing I would say is that I think we would be amending it with the understanding that it's possible the item will come back to us in two weeks and all of us will have looked at it and there will still be no other funding source and we will go with ARPA funding. But I think what we're saying is two weeks and if they want to move forward with it in the next two weeks, they, we need to find another funding source. Um, so I, I, would, I would put that out there as my sort of solution to what we currently got going on. But, um, but really it all depends on other members of council and how they, how they feel about this. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if that's what we want to do, um, I'll, I'll join in on that. I'm fine with that. Um, I would definitely like to see this if if Skip's option does not work out for sure. So, but I'll support this um, given the time crunch and what have you. So, Mr. Allison, can I just throw something out there? Yes, Mr. Winder. So, in the current budget, we budgeted and ordered a truck for streets and parks that's roughly sixty thousand dollars. It doesn't sound promising that we'll receive that this year. I mean, if I can confirm from the dealership that it's not going to be here this year, we could always use that funding for the scoreboard. That would just require council to commit to putting that money back in the budget for next year. Okay. And thank you for that. I mean, it's a viable option. And like I said, I can confirm from the dealership that it won't be here. So it'll lessen the amount that we have to find somewhere else. Thank you, uh, Mr. Winder. Um, that's a generous offer and and that's um, outside the box thinking. Appreciate that. And I think there's, uh, from what I understand, uh, Mr. Sander, you went through the budget with Mr. Pavlak. Yes, we to did. See, uh, to see if there was any line item that was dedicated to this. Is that, that correct? There was any line item that was not go was not already used or was not going to be used this year and we did not find any. Okay. So that that just goes to the point that other than CDBG money or ARPA money, there may be some one or two other things that could be um, paired together that would that would uh, take care of this bill and allow us to move on and um, get the project done. So I, I, I really think it's there. Uh, it, it's going to take a little bit of, of digging and putting some heads together more, you know, not just having people having to, to do all of their own research. So in any case, um, other comments from council members on that. Randy, I think what we're all saying, okay, from the finance committee, at least, that we do not want to see money allocated from ARPA at this point. We, we just, you know, we haven't, we have not sat down and came up with a plan. Uh, we all are aware of what money we have there, but we want a plan for that. We just don't want it. Okay, we need money for this, let's use that. You know, you just can't willy nilly do that. And we don't want to see that done because we don't have the, the money in our budget left over from anything. So we've got to be careful with what we're going to do with this money. It's a godsend, yes but it can't be used for things that, you know, we've got to find other ways to do this because yeah. you know where we stand with the budget and hopefully they are starting to work on the budget to see where we stand with all of this. Well, and good point, Mrs. Katz. And I think uh, Councilwoman Mealy, um, and, and I, as I said, I listened into the, the finance committee and I heard the conversation. I think, I think the, um, the intent of the, the finance committee is that, as Councilwoman Mealy said, um, we can start, we can spend the ARPA money, but we need some parameters. We need a plan. We need uh, dedicated projects or areas uh, that we agree to spend that money on. And, and then we're on solid ground because we're not grab bagging or plugging holes in the dike. Um, so I, I really think, uh, when you get down to it, we're probably all on the same page and, and we'll come to an agreement, but, um, so I don't want to dominate the conversation with anything 
from other council people. Um, Mr. Mackey, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, Randy, I, 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 I agree with what you're saying, but, but to Bonnie's point, to Adam's point, to Liz's point, um, and I, and I mean, I, from, from past conversations this council's had on other issues, we're all about not setting a, a, a precedent for making bad decisions, right. Or undermining anything. So, um, you know, this, this ARPA money is, is it, there's a lot of it, but we have to be very careful with how we spend it. And right. um, if that means that the cross cutters scoreboard gets delayed a little bit, then I think that's what's going to have to happen. Unfortunately, I, but I, had, I also understand what you're saying. You know, this has been a long process. We want to get this done. Um, but I personally, you know, if it's, it's going to be, it's going to be hard to, to, if we start doing this, like Bonnie said, if we start, well, let's just, we just need a little bit. Let's just take a little bit. The next thing you know, it's, it's all gone. So yeah. um, I would feel, I would feel better if, if, if we just, if we can just come up with a solution to this tonight mm -hmm. and, and figure out exactly how can we get this, how can we keep this scoreboard on track, but not spend ARPA money. And it sounds to me that Adam Winder has, a viable option for that. Yes, absolutely. Does that mean we need to maybe table this, rework it, come back in two weeks, John? I mean, is that really gonna? Is two weeks really going to set this whole project back? And be honest. I, I am. I have been honest. Eight nine thirteen is the start date. So whatever day that day is, uh, that okay. is is uh, Monday of next week. Okay. Well, that's the start date, right? We we don't have to pay this bill until they're done. Correct. That's a good point. However. Uh, Dactronics has asked me where this where this approval is, and I'm, I've been honest with them. Told them then it's not it's not here yet. I don't have that approval yet. They're not going to go on on goodwill, correct, <laughs> or good intentions. That they want it signed on the dotted line. To be clear, um, I was not advocating using ARPA money. I guess I wasn't clear enough on that. Um, I was advocating to work together to get this over the finish line. So. Um, I think we're all on the same page with that. Yeah, I would I would agree that we are as as far as council's concerned on the same page. Yeah. Again, I don't want to speak for, for Dave and, and Vince isn't here, but I, I've heard I mean from everybody else. So yeah. I, I did get a call call from the cross coast today. They were concerned about this not getting passed. I'm just putting that out there. Yeah, I mean uh, I, I think I proposed a solution to that. Yes, we're going did. to pass. We're going to pass it. We're going to pass it on the condition that we find another pot of money to use aside from the ARPA funding. At this point, I think we have two potentially viable options on board, um, so we're looking pretty good. Yeah, um, I, I, right. Exactly. I'll, I'll repeat what I just said. The diatronics is is concerned that we sign on the dotted line. They could care less how we work it out internally with the funding. Um, that's on us legally um they they want it committed to and i don't think we're in disagreement on that and i i think we're confident that it can be found um outside of arpa i was just a little worried that the whole issue was slipping away really quick there <laughs> so um is somebody going to move on uh, that suggestion, Mr. Yoder? I move we uh, vote on the on the matter and condition of uh, not using ARPA money at the moment. Um, do we have to? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that has to be amended, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lubin is on by phone. Uh, yes, uh, you would have to do an amendment to just say that, um, you know, it's, you're approving the resolution, and then just add a provision to it that, um, you know, that uh, the administration is not to use the uh, ARCO funding. You know, absent council approval. Okay. Randy? Yes. 
I, I, I move to uh, make an amendment to the motion um, to add that uh, American Rescue Plan funding is not to be used for this project without further council approval. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I will second that. There's a, a motion and a second. Did you get that, Mrs. Frank? Yes, I did. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this amendment? Okay. We'll have the vote, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, that brings us back to the, uh, the original resolution, the original motion to uh, pass the uh, resolution. Is there any further discussion from council on that? Okay, uh, thank you. We'll have the vote on the uh, initial motion, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes 6-0. Okay, um, good job, council. And, and everyone, Mr. Sander, Mr. Winder, everyone, Ms., uh, Mr. Memmi, uh, Mayor Slaughter, if I forgot anybody, um, it was a, a spirited discussion, but uh, that's democracy in action, and that's how it's supposed to function in public so that um, not only we are aware of what's going on, but the public is engaged um, with uh, every detail. Oh. Randy, if I, if I can add to that, yes. this is how the administration should work with Skip, with Adam Winder. This is how it should work to find out how we can overcome some of our problems financially. And this, I think this, not think, this is what we were saying. The administration can come up with creative ideas. Right. And I do thank both Skip and Adam Winder for this. And John, thank you for, like I said before in a finance meeting, you brought it down from 150 grand to 64. Thank God we wouldn't have to go for 150. Mm -hmm. Yep. Randy, can I ask one quick question only because of my idea of using yes, the money for the truck? Absolutely. Um, so if we were to use that line item, that would have to come back in front of council for a transfer of that line item where we could ask that council makes that resolution that says they'll put the money back in next year, correct? Follow what I'm saying? I, I did. Hmm. So, so if, we're, if we're requesting that money to be transferred right. from the line item for that truck to the line item for the scoreboard, that has to come before council to move that money, correct? Correct, yes. So at that time, we could add the language that since we're doing this, we know we ordered the truck in 2021, mm -hmm. council will put the money back in the budget in 2022. Yes, the, truck, the truck's been ordered, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. It was ordered in January, but due to this major issue with the chips, um, it just, yeah. I want to call it reordered, but they resubmitted the order through Chevrolet and they're not even sure when they're going to start assembling them. So our 2021 truck may actually be a 2022 truck till we get it because they may not manufacture it till next year. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that, that's a, a legal commitment that we made. Okay. city to purchase that um, okay it's all part of working out a budget <laughs> so yes yes definitely i just want to be sure that we can i mean sure i can't council speak. knows yes. that's where the money came from and we can clarify that we need to put it back um other council members are you comfortable with that Yes, John. I guess Adam Winder doesn't want it to say when he brings it back to us that we say, what truck? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and Randy, Adam makes a very good point that, um, well, that the, the only potential issue with, with choosing to, to expend the funds this way, um, that way, Mr. Winder, I guess I would say that I would defer if we have money available in cdbg that would be a wiser source yes if we can utilize cdbg for this um because mr winder we will not be able to fund your truck out of arpa funds should we so choose no no, no, um, no right no, no. And, I, and and i and, and i know that but i'm just saying um 
all, all of council needs to be aware of that, you know, if, if, that, that we can't, that this is not an expense we're not making. This is simply an expense we're not making in 2021. Cool. And that, right. and that, and that consequently, we're, we're deferring expenditures. We're, 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 we're stealing from Peter, from Peter to pay Paul um, in this case. And, and, and the items that we will then be, um, that Peter will need to be reimbursed for cannot be reimbursed through ARPA funding. Um, so, so it would be my suggestion that we fully explore the, uh, the, the idea of CDBG funding or other elements of the budget that we won't necessarily need to put back in next year um, before we take Adam's sort of nuclear option there. Right. Um, okay. I, I totally agree. That should be um, that should be down the list of that's a fail safe. Correct. I, I mean, I, I think there's a few other options that you know we could really look at. It. Maybe trimming some things. You know, whether it's streets and parks. Um, look at what's left it. in um, the facility maintenance budget over at Bowman Field. I don't know what's left there. Uh, I'm not sure because I wasn't involved with John and Joe on what all they looked at, but um, I mean, we can definitely look at some areas, do some savings to accumulate the money. Okay, th thanks again, Mr. Winder. Much appreciated. Let's uh, move on to item 10 then. Resolution to approve the 2021 James David Robinson Cultural Arts Grant Program. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, is there a motion and uh, second from council? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, Ms. Drummond, welcome tonight. Thank you. Um, so the resolution you have in front of you is for our 2020. One um, cultural grant. This grant goes out citywide. Um, different organizations are able to apply for it. We only had two recipients this year that actually applied and were able to complete their programs with the restrictions that the CDC had. Um, one is for the Community Arts Center for a student summer stock program. Um, and the other one is the Bald Eagle Art League for their Ways Garden Art Show. Both of these programs were completed and their final report were turned in and they are now just awaiting your approval to receive their funds. Thank you, Ms. Drummond. Um, this was reviewed in finance. Correct. Yeah, Brandy, this item was reviewed in finance too. <laughs> I think, finance I think unfortunately like for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately for everyone in attendance at the council meeting, they're going to be hearing a lot of my voice even when I'm not starting fires. Um, okay, uh, this item was reviewed in the finance committee um, and, and approved. Uh, the, the only point that we made was um, both, both of these uh, events have actually uh, are, are, are somewhat long past. I think the, mm -hmm. I think the, the summer stock musical happened in July and the Bald Eagle Art League, Art League show up happened in June. Yes. Um, and we, we noted with Kayla that it might be nice if we look back over um, our existing regulations for this item, which is a completely city funded grant, um, to try and make it possible for organizations to receive notification of their funding prior to their event. Um, that is to say, it, it just seems as though it would be helpful to know whether you were getting $800 or $1,500 um, in funding uh, before, before you held your event and, and sort of spent the money. Um, and, and so we, we did discuss with Kayla that we could perhaps sit down in January and look at modifying requirements to make that a reality. Um, aside from that, we passed it to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Mealy. Um, other finance members, comments, or anybody from council? Um, hearing and seeing none on the motion, Mrs. Frank, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We move to item 11, please. Resolution to approve and renew the partnership agreement between the City of Williamsport and Step AmeriCorps for one full-time AmeriCorps service person in the Recreation Department. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second from Council? So moved. Second. 
Moved and seconded. Uh, again, finance. Um, yes, indeed, Randy. Uh, now this item finance had a little bit more discussion um, relating to it. Uh, this is um, to hire a, a new full-time AmeriCorps member within the Streets and Parks Department. Um, the amount is fairly nominal compared to most city salaries. It's, it, it's, it's between eight and $9,000 um, for a full-time uh, person for an entire year. Um, and it is possible that, that we can actually reduce the amount of funding required through use of, um, of AmeriCorps' uh, uh, American Rescue Plan Act funding, um, which of course would make it even more reasonable. Um, uh, that, that said, the Finance Committee had kind of a lengthy discussion about the need for a full-time AmeriCorps member in the upcoming season in the Recreation Department. Um, uh, and that just related to, you know, as, as Ms. Drummond pointed out, she herself was a full-time AmeriCorps member when she was first hired by the city. Um, and the, uh, and, um, and, you know, and she worked as a full-time AmeriCorps member for the city for several years before she was hired on as the Recreation Director. Um, that said, Ms. Drummond was initially hired in February, um, sort of toward the beginning of the recreation season, which I think is probably why there wasn't um, quite so much question about, about her hiring. Um, but, but Ms. Drummond did tell us sort of what she had um, accomplished as, or what, you know, what she and, um, and Jesse Nobinger, who was the, the, the prior recreation director, uh, worked on together during the winter months in the past. Um, and we had, we had asked her, um, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, but we had sort of asked her to give a a description to the full body of council of, of the projects that she saw in the future for the person um, who she will be hiring from America. We don't know the identity of the person yet. They have a handful of candidates we would interview um, once we committed to a full-time hire. Um, but I, I know as, you know, um, I think it was just Bonnie and I at that point had asked Kayla to sort of give us a, a summary. And, and, and I think really to sort of prepare a work plan for the winter um, for the, for this candidate so that, um, so that we knew that, that we would be starting off on the right foot and really giving the person a sense that they were that they were working and that there was work for them to do in the city. Um, Cause I, you know, the, the first month or two of employment really sets the stage for, for, the, for the remaining months of employment and we'll need the person to be working hard um, come next summer. Um, Ms. Drummond, did you have anything that you'd had time to put together between now uh, or between Tuesday and now? I, I know that we do have a number of winter events coming up, but can you talk to us a little bit about your uh, plans for this person here for the next several months until next uh, May, next April? Correct. I do have four upcoming events um, between October to December, as well as plans for starting tomorrow to um, continue on the project for the local community swimming pool, Memorial Pool, Splash Cove. Um, so that is taking a lot of my time currently, and I apologize for not getting you the list of projects and the day-to-day -day things that that person would be expected to be doing. Um, there are plenty of things that go on in a recreation, um, not just those summer months when this is what we call my off season. Um, I am going over everything that's prior to the summer past, um, getting those bills together. Right now we are doing budget, so we would be doing that person would be helping that as well, doing check requisitions. Um, it's day to day, it changes for the needs of my department as far as recreation and parks. Now I can't speak on the behalf of the public works because I may work directly with them, but their system and the way they operate is completely different from how my office is operated. Um, there is a lot to, to be learned in the recreation. I was with AmeriCorps and Jesse three years prior to being hired on. And to this day, I'm still learning everything new. Um, things are constantly changing. I have things that go for the pool, parks, playgrounds that I myself can have to continue up keeping training certifications. And I require this person as well to be able to um, help me when needed, as well as help in the office answering phones reaching out to communities for volunteers, uh, reaching out to the community on what needs need, uh, need to be provided. There is many, many things and that list continues on. Great, thank you, Ms. Drummond. I, I think that was, that was really sort of what we were hoping to, uh, to hear. Um, so Randy, I think, you know, the, the discussion is, um, you know, obviously a full-time AmeriCorps member in the recreation department gives us extra staffing when we need it most in the six months um, of our heavy recreation season. 
Um, and I think, you know, the only, uh, the only charge we're really giving us from them is to make certain that that person is, 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 is put to work and is working hard from, from the minute they arrive with the city. Um, and that, you know, um, and that the person really, you know, even, even though they're with us through AmeriCorps becomes uh, an, an, an employee of the city and, and, and learns, you know, both about, you know, the public facing elements, but also about, about city operations and recreational operations um, with hopes that, that, that this will also enable that individual to go out and, and um, much like much as Ms. Drummond has move into, a, a, you know, a path that, that they receive some training for within the city. Um, I will defer to other members of finance and the uh, council for further comments. We passed this, honestly, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember it. Bonnie, was it no recommendation or a positive recommendation pending further? Uh, it was a positive recommendation. That's what I thought. I'm sorry. The Tuesday's meeting was a long one, Randy, and there were a lot yeah. of different recommendations. Right. Um, okay. Thanks, Bonnie, for clarifying that for me. Um, that's everything. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mealy. Uh, other, Mr. Mackey. Um, yeah. Real, just real quick, um, Josh, are, are you are you there? Josh Warfel. Josh Warfel, are you there? I just, if you if you can hear me, um, could we just make sure that everybody is muted? That's not. Um, well, we we have some people that are unmuted, and it's just causing a lot of background noise. Um, but aside from that, while while we're in the um, Kayla section of the agenda, um, I just wanted to commend her for <clears throat> the uh, Williamsport Welcome to the World. Um, it was, it was a really great event. Um, I was down there for a couple of hours helping place vendors. Um, but I think Kayla got there at eight o'clock in the morning and Kayla remind me again, what time did you get home that night? I didn't leave till the last vendor left and that was a little after 10. Okay. Yeah. And I just, again, it, it was a great event and, um, Kayla really, really worked hard on that. Um, and I just, I just wanted to say great job. Um, I think I think it was a success. So good job on that. Thank you, and I appreciate your help. Well said, Mr. Mackey. Other comments from council members? Hearing none, Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, I don't see the mayor yet, so we'll just keep moving ahead. Item 12, lot consolidation. Mr. Narr, you're up for five in a row here. Good evening, President Allison and members of council. What I'm presenting to you tonight is a subdivision lot consolidation request to, from the lands of WIF Reva Puri LLC. The property is located at the corner of First Street and Maynard Street. There's a total of six parcels. They are located within the commercial zoning district. What he's requesting to do is combine them all as one for a future development that he is looking and working on with us in the city to develop the property as far as a commercial property. Um, it was reviewed by both Lycoming County Planning as well as our planning, city planning, and they passed it with a positive recommendation. And I do have a representative and I can answer any additional questions. Um, questions or comments from council members? I'm just, it's, uh, it's Bonnie, Randy. Uh, yeah. I'm just happy that this is gonna be utilized into uh, the properties are going to be utilized for uh, uh, an, something that's going to be, uh, uh, it's not residential, you're talking business, I, t I take it. It is within the commercial zone and it would be required to meet commercial. Within the commercial zone, um, tentatively what he's looking at is the first floor will be commercial uses, whether it be restaurants or laundromats, and the upper floors, which is permitted in a CC, would be residential dwellings. Okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you. Other, any other questions from council? Uh, is there a motion, please, from council then? So move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, we've had our discussion. Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. 
Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And I just want to thank everyone who's uh, waited through our meeting for your patience tonight. Um, we'll move to item 13. Mr. Nar. Good evening, President Allison, members of council again. What I'm presenting to you tonight is a one lot subdivision request. The property is located at 917 Arch Street. It is within the commercial zoning district. Lot one will contain 2,984 square feet and it does have a building on it. And the residual will contain 7,900 square feet. Each again cont will contain a, a structure on them. They are within the commercial zone. Um, this did go before the zoning hearing board for the lot consolidation because the rear yard setbacks is currently not met and is non-conforming. And under the zoning rules, whenever you subdivide, you're supposed to meet it even currently. So it does not meet the rear yard setback of 15 feet. So they are asking, they, they had asked from the zoning hearing board a nine foot uh, nine foot variance and the zoning hearing board did grant them again the property was existing the building had already been there it already did not meet the rear yard setbacks but as part of that subdivision it did require to go through the zoning hearing board zoning hearing board did to grant did grant the variance so therefore at this point he's requesting to subdivide it and it'll have two structures on it it is within the commercial zoning district it was reviewed both by the Lycoming County Planning as well as the City Planning and passed with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Nar. Questions from other council members tonight? I don't hear or see any. Um, is there a motion from council then? So move. Is there a second? Is there a second? second. Yes, second. Okay, moved and seconded, um, and no questions. Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We will move to item 14, demolition. What I'm presenting to you tonight is a demolition request from Penn College for the structure located at 971 Second Street. It is located within the Institutional Zoning District. Um, it was the, the property had been in a trust um, and Penn College had purchased it. The structure was used as a single family dwelling and is currently vacant. The pictures that you do have before you, uh, the property did have a lot of structural damage. Um, and again, had sat vacant for a while because it had belonged to a trust and therefore Penn College purchased it. And at this point are requesting to demolish the building to uh, create any more blight within the area. Thank you, Mr. Nair. Questions from the council members tonight? Okay, here and see. I'm on a roll. Yeah, is there a motion? Yeah. I'll move. Is there a second? Second. 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 And Mr. Nara, I think you owe this to Mr. Uh, Slaughter and I. Um, <laughs> um, but congratulations on your role. Second. Yes. Thank you. There's a motion and a second on the floor, and there's uh, no request for discussion. Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Abstain. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Neely. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes five yeas, no nays, and one abstention. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We will move to item 15, a COA. What I present to you tonight is a certificate of appropriateness request from 202 West 4th Street. It is the current Janetti Hotel. What they're requesting to do is place two signs on a corner of the building, one facing West 4th Street and one will face William Street. You do have attached drawings showing you what the signs will look like. Currently, those signs that are there are actually just banners. 
but they're going to put a more permanent signage up there. With that, the size of that will be a three foot by five by 40 inch. It will be made of aluminum and vinyl covering to look like wood. It will be internal, eternally illuminated. And at this point in time, like I said, I, I can ask Aaron, I can answer any questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Nair. Are there questions tonight? When I saw these signs and I saw the material, just the material, I, I wondered when this was gonna to come to us. Uh, I think this is gonna look really good when it's lit up for, for the Genetti. I really do. Other comments or questions? Uh, thank you, Councilwoman Katz, I agree. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Move. Second. Moved and seconded. Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And item 16, another COA. This certificate of appropriateness request is to paint, uh, is located at 339 Market Street. It's called the Barham Market um, as part of that structure. And what they are requesting to do is, a, is basically paint the attached attorney's office the same color as the restaurant that they have next door. The color of the restaurant had been previously approved by council um, uh, probably over a year, maybe two years ago for the color of city council, it's called city council and it's a black coloring is what they use. So what they're requesting to do is the picture that you have is paint the, to match the, the property to the right, they're gonna match that black with that as well as paint the trim on the second and third floor. It'll basically bring that whole building in harmony. And again, council did approve this several years ago, that color of black for the actual um, establishment at the bar and market. Thank you, Mr. Nair. Are there comments or questions from council members? Mrs. Katz. Anthony Masser, I think this is gonna make that, that whole area really wonderful to look at. Uh, you've always been doing a good job with it and uh, this is just gonna clean it up a little bit more. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're really, uh, really excited to finally get this building. Um, being one of the oldest buildings in downtown Williamsport, built in 1821, um, we're super excited just to get everything repaired and, and back to looking the way it should. Very good. Uh, hearing and seeing no other comments, is there a motion and a second from council? I'll move. I'll move. Second. Moved and seconded. Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, we have items three, four, and five to do yet. And thank you everyone who's participated thus far. Um, appreciate you. Uh, wading through that and what you're doing to help the city be a, a better place. Um, I, I don't see the mayor back yet. And these are his items. So we'll, uh, Let's, uh, we'll just keep moving on. Item 17, uh, these are certificates of appropriateness from HARB. Um, item one is Fortunate Sons Properties, LLC, 857 West 3rd Street. Um, there's a lot of painting going on. And this is the uh, gonna be the new site of the Crazy Tomato Restaurant at the corner of um, West Third and Maynard Streets, the buildings. Uh, it's a nice building from the outside, uh, fairly new, and um, but it hasn't been occupied lately by an ongoing business. So it's great to uh, to have these new 
um, people coming into the city to um, to help that whole area in our whole city. Um, item two, Mirabito Properties, uh, 924 West Third Street. There's a lot of caulking and painting going on on the outside of that particular building. Item three is McCormick Law Firm, 835 West 4th Street. Uh, it's a, a roofing project that has uh, a lot of various different phases to it, including the shingles. Um, item four, Ronald and June Wright, 901 West 4th Street. Um, there's a lot of caulking, painting, and roofing going on here. This is an ongoing business, the Backhouse Cafe at the corner of uh, Maynard and West Fourth. Item five, Fred and Darlene Keller's 915 West Fourth Street. And uh, there's they're installing uh, gate and fencing. And that's all we have from Harb tonight. Is there a motion and a second on these items? A move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments or uh, things from any at all from council members on this? I hear and see none. So, Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And I do see, oh, I saw them. Yeah, I'm here, Randy. Uh, hello, Mayor. Um, we'll, we'll move up to item three. Um, Mrs. Frank, in short form, please. Resolution appointment for Director of Public Safety, and that would be just Chief Justin Snyder. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second from Council tonight? So move. Moved, moved and seconded. Uh, Mayor Slaughter. Yes, what you have before you is a resolution for the appointment of Chief Justin Snyder to uh, Director of Public Safety. Um, we had a conversation, this was reviewed by finance um, and there was, it was sent to the full body with no recommendation. Uh, there was conversation around uh, many of the directors, Director of Finance, Director of Administration, Director of Public Safety, et cetera. Uh, and you know, what that might look like moving forward and uh, the, the need to possibly revisit the administrative code. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of where that went, but it was reviewed in finance and sent with no recommendation. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor Slaughter. Um, Councilwoman Mealy, finance. Yeah, thanks, Randy. Um, this was reviewed by the Finance Committee and sent forward with no recommendation. I, I don't believe, although I can't speak for all the members of finance, that our intent uh, was, of course, to encourage anyone to to not vote for um, Chief Snyder as, as the head of public safety. But we wanted to encourage some robust discussion um, related to the, the nature of department heads um, and, and, and what we feel um, the depart a department head's role is within the city. Um, you know, and I, I actually think, Mr. Yoder, if you wouldn't mind, could I pass this one to you? Um, Adam Yoder really led the discussion out and made some excellent points. And, um, and I think perhaps it would be better if you represented some of the initial discussion and then the rest of us can fill in. Great, Mr. Yoder. Uh, certainly, thanks, Ms. Mealy. Um, yeah, we, we had a, a pretty vigorous discussion on this. Um, with related to Director of Public Safety, you know, the discussion was really surrounded on um, do we really need this role or not? Um, when we amended a lot of the code last year to kind of get it up to speed to modernize the checks and balances that are um, in the third class optional charter law, um, this was one of the roles that we knew, you know, was still kind of fluid and needed flushed out. Um, and so we had some discussion on, you know, do we really need this role if we, if we do? Um, should we or shouldn't we actually find the money to fund it and hire a, a, a professional staff member? And that certainly, um, given some of the discussion we've had tonight, wouldn't be without its challenges. But um, if it is something that is important to have, um, we had discussion on if it should or should not be funded. Um, and, and, and more broadly speaking, um, similar conversation with a lot of the other um, department heads. Um, there was discussion with Public Works um, and some of the 
I think challenges that the administration has had in trying to fill that role. Um, there was certainly discussion, um, and, and I think um, a, an eagerness um, from the finance committee specifically to um, help um, if there's any changes to law that need to be made or, or what have you. Um, I, I think that we're here to to aid those effort those efforts. Um, and you know, we we had some discussion on. Um, RVT falls into that, you know, we broke that out as a new department and uh, um, have not had a confirmation there. Um, had more discussion on finance administration and, you know, something that's been lacking in the city for a long time. And, and I think that we're still missing. Um, and I think finance agreed was really the, um, the strategic nature of the role of the former director of administration and, and now um, you know, the, their amended finance administration, um, what does that look like? And, um, you know, when we figure out what that looks like, how do we fund it? Um, so I, that, that kind of hit everything. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to other members of the finance committee, Bonnie, um, you aided in the conversation in council. Um, so if I miss anything, just chime in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't unmute myself there for a second. Um, one of the things that we did discuss is that is, uh, one person holding two, two positions. That was one of the things, and I think that's in the, the administrative code. And uh, uh, not that we don't trust the judgment of what's going on with, with uh, the chief. I mean, he's doing a, a really remarkable job. Uh, we're just I think what we're what finance where finance is coming from is we're we're trying to help clean up everything in the city to make everything more organized and, and more running smoothly. I think that's what our, our our objective is. At least that's what my objective is. Um, I will say this this though this is a directorship. This is you know of public safety, um, and and I do know the chief does not live in the city. There is a residency clause. Okay, that is one of the things that we we didn't discuss. Um, do we, and I did question, um, is it third class city code? Do we need a public safety director? Because we've looked at what the chiefs have done, what uh, uh, Mark Killian has done with the fire department, what the codes do, when there are situations that come about that we need all hands on deck. Um, I think the department heads really do take charge and I think they do a wonderful job. We've seen that in the last two years as far as some of the, the um, what has been presented to us with protests and, and so many other things. Um, we know what they've done. We know what they've accomplished. And, uh, you know, but that I, I'm going to just say, you know, do we really need a public safety director? That's, that's all I'm saying, because I know these men have done remarkable jobs. Brandy, if I can jump in on sure. that too. Um, for the third class charter, we don't have to. Um, we don't really technically have to have any department. Nothing's really laid out um, aside from a reference to a director of administration, which is optional um, to answer your question, Bonnie. Um, and, and a couple of the specific points that Bonnie was starting to hit on that we discussed specifically about this directorship um, that, that I had that I had expressed um, and um, were, were the root of my um, hesitation to support this. We're, we're no specific reflection of um, Chief Snyder, as, he, as Bonnie said, I agree, he's doing a fantastic job so far. Um, there's a lot of good stuff going on in the police department from a strategic planning perspective, um, which we had discussed briefly here in a previous meeting, um, one of our last ones in person recently, um, which I'm, I'm excited to see. And um, in, in addition to that, you know, um, he, he's still learning the job. Um, and, you know, I, I think pulling that focus off of him a little bit um, may not be wise given, you know, the, the, the needs of our police department and the, the impact the police department has on our community year over year. So that was some of the specific points that we discussed, um, in, in finance. So I'll, I'll yield the floor this time. I've, I've spoken enough probably. Um, yes. And as I, as I said before, I, I did, I was able to, um, to listen into that conversation. It was very interesting. And we've talked a lot about administration. Um, a couple thoughts came to me and and the mayor and um, <clears throat> Chief Snyder could, uh, could answer some of these. Um, I, I'm not 
familiar, and I'm not sure any of us are familiar, um, how much being public safety director um, affects the, the chief of police who's been holding that uh, before the former mayor held it for a while, um, how much that is that comes into play on a daily basis. Because as I, as I thought about um, the public safety director, um, it seems it comes to the forefront when there's a crisis or an emergency kind of situation, an unusual, and it doesn't have to be negative. Uh, we had protests downtown uh, early last year and they were all peaceful and great, but we still had to, to organize and have precautions. So um, I do think, to my thinking, what, when there is something like that, or when we have the, uh, the, uh, the National Socialists show up in Brandon Park, um, I think there does have to be somebody from public safety um, in charge as a coordinator. So um, that's just the way things function. Somebody has got to be tying all the, the loose ends together. So as I was listening to the conversation um, on Tuesday, I thought, um, do we need a public safety director or do we need uh, an emergency, a public safety emergency coordinator position? Um, someone that, that would be responsible in those particular instances to, um, to work and bring everything together. As I said, I don't know how much public safety director um, comes into play on a daily basis in the job. So perhaps uh, uh, the mayor and Chief Snyder could talk a little bit about that. Sure, I could, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, I would say not a whole lot. Obviously, as you mentioned, we had some events and if there's uh, some type of critical emergency uh, or event happening in the city, uh, the director of public safety would, would clearly take the lead and, and coordinate some of uh, the uh, public safety personnel with other, whether it's local, county, state, federal, whatever the case might be. As far as the uh, internal operations and things of that nature, I'll defer uh, to Chief Snyder because obviously on a day-to-day, -day, I'm not, uh, you know, doing the the actual operational side of things as far as it as it relates to the you know, the police or the fire codes, etc. Uh, so I'll defer to Chief Snyder on that one. <clears throat> And I'll, I'll also say to the conversation a little bit, um, when we talked about multiple roles, the same person holding it, that's kind of what led to the discussion around uh, director of administration and director of finance. As it, as it stands right now, uh, per the administrative code, that's the same person. So that's kind of what led to our discussion. Uh, do we want to split that out uh, and not have the same person be director of administration, and director of finance? Because then technically, Director of Finance would be uh, reporting to themselves, which is kind of what we want to get away from. A little counterproductive there. Chief Snyder, um, we'd really love to hear your outlook on all of this. Yes, yeah, sir. From, from a, a standpoint, from the, as, a, as a chief, it is not something that would be uh, interfering with day-to-day -day operations. It's more or less, as you kind of pointed out there, it's going to be... Uh, more or less being prepared and set and ready to go for when that major incident app does happen. Uh, I did notice that uh, we have not updated our emergency preparedness uh, operational plan since 2017. And I also have been looking to see if there's a um, job description and I have not found one that's for in the city. Uh, I don't know if anybody has one available or uh, knows of one from when we had those positions from before. Um, but yeah, it's not a gun. It's not something that's going to be day to day that you're dealing with. It's just being prepared for, for when the major incident happens. And then what it does is it establishes a clear uh, chain of command for when dealing with those incidents. So uh, look forward to looking, working collectively with, you know, Chief Killian and some other stakeholders within in the community to make sure we have a plan in place. So if something were to happen that we have to deal with that 
that we can deal with efficient, efficiently and appropriately. So I don't know if that answers your question, sir. Uh, yeah, it, it does actually. Um, you know, it, in a sense, um, well, it's part of the, the third class city optional code um, about a, a director. But other than that, in, in some ways, it's, it's a little bit of, that's a legal definition, but it's kind of semantics, what you call the person, there's going to be somebody in charge in a public safety um, crisis or emergency or uh, big event, like a president coming to town. Um, of course, they're coordinating with other uh, law enforcement agencies up and down the whole spectrum, but in that case, but um, so we need somebody in that position, I believe, but um, yeah, what what form or function or shape does that take as far as uh, naming, I guess, or designating? Well, Randy, I think, can I interject a little bit of historical perspective on the position? Yes, sure. Um, so yeah. to my recollection, and, and correct me someone if I'm wrong, um, it seems to me that under Mary Wolf, um, the city reorganized its administrative code to create a number of different department heads within the city. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them was the director of public safety. And the concept behind the director of public safety, I think at least at the outset, was actually less the person who did, I, I would imagine emergency preparedness coordination was an element of it, but I think it was also over budgetary oversight in particular of the police and fire departments. Correct. Um, uh, and the idea was that that person would help manage um, claims within the police and fire departments and, and sort of manage our overarching public safety policy. Right. Um, and, and I'm not saying that that, that position is necessary, that that, that that happening within the city is necessary, but to the point of whether or not we need um, a public safety director, I would say with the, the, we also perhaps need a definition of that person's job as public safety director. If, if the job of the, if the job of the person who is public safety director is simply to coordinate emergency preparedness um, amongst the departments, then obviously it should, if that person, the public safety director could and perhaps should come from within our public safety forces. If the job of the public safety director is partly oversight over um, the departments on the, 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 the sort of boroughs, bureaus underneath public safety, um, then that person should probably not be uh, a chief of one of the existing um, bureaus. Uh, so I, I, you know, I think that's really the discussion that we need to have, and we don't need to have it this evening. But that's that. That to me was the was the meat of the discussion about public safety director. What is that role? How do we define it? How do we how do we codify it? I don't think we need to codify it by ordinance, but do we codify it by policy within the city? And then um, that determines whether or not um, we want, uh, you know, someone from our existing public safety forces serving as, as the director or not. Right. Um, but as I said, we're not codifying that this evening. Um, Chief Snyder is, is clearly the, the person who, um, uh, or is, is, is would clearly do an excellent job at coordinating emerg emergency preparedness um, elements within the city. And, and, and so I see no reason to, to, um, to stand in the, in the path of confirmation this evening. Right. Thanks. So we um, let's um, a, a hypothetical. Um, suppose we weren't having this discussion tonight, and emergency came up um, next week. Um, I assume we would revert to the the model that's been used all along with the person called the public safety director, um, not officially being there, but um, with the mayor designating who's going to be in charge at that moment um, and overseeing it. Um, Mr. Allison, this yeah. is uh, Chief Killian, if I may. Yes, yes, Chief Killian, please. <clears throat> um, just to just add a, a, a little bit to the conversation here, and this is not uh, by any means to, you know, um, sway discussion one point or another, but to, to answer your question a little bit, yes. um, you know, the, the Bureau of Fires had uh, responsibility for emergency management. 
now for about 15 years, you know, with the, the, the fire chiefs typically holding the role of emergency management coordinator, which I, I have now for since I became chief. And, you know, we work, um, all our public safety agencies work very closely together. So, you know, to your point, <clears throat> I think regardless of the position, we're all going to, um, you know, use our areas of expertise. Obviously, if the if that emergency is a um, a protest, we're going to lean more heavily on the police department with their, you know, with their expertise in that area. Mm-hmm. If that emergency is a is a flooding event or a large scale natural disaster, we're going to lean more on fire department and emergency management because of our experience in that area. So, you know, there's definitely a collaborative effort there, um, no matter what, regardless of of a person designated as who's in charge. You know, our goal at the end of the day is public safety across the board. So, um, you know, you've you mentioned emergency preparedness a few times. You know, Chief mm-hmm. uh, Snyder mentioned the emergency operations plan. You know, that's something that we maintain uh, consistently. Consistently, the last full scale um, update of that EOP, as Chief Snyder mentioned, was in 2017. Mm-hmm. You know, that's under revision now. So substantial additions and changes. Um, you know, through uh, you know, through work from all the different public safety departments. So again, just to just add a little bit of uh, context to the conversation regarding the, the roles that we're all currently filling now. And I think to that point a little bit, you know, to add a little bit further is, you know, Chief Killian is able to, you know, he's chief of fire, obviously, and also emergency management. And that, that doesn't, not taken away from his daily operations as uh, the mm-hmm. chief of our fire department. Uh, and I think in the same manner, uh, obviously, it's up to city council, clearly. Um, but I don't think uh, director of public safety would necessarily take away um, from uh, the daily operations of the uh, police, uh, police department, uh, which is right. Nitro's chief. Uh, but if we do want to revisit as far as have a discussion around what we want the director of public safety job duties to look like, um, that's, you know, whether we want it to be the operational side of things as far as uh, during events and things of that nature, rescue emergency situations, or do we want it to be around uh, the oversight of the financials and the general direction of the public safety department? Uh, you know, as Councilmember Mealy said, that's a conversation we can have as well. And I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation. <clears throat> um, is there, is, is this an urgent, decision we need to make or oh i mean as you as you mentioned i think you know if we were you know hopefully not but you know if there was to be a a natural disaster next week uh, obviously our public safety personnel works extremely well together um and then you know at that point i would designate someone clearly but they you know, I was I was on the scene of the major fire uh, over on Park Ave there mm-hmm. a little while back, and just watching everyone uh, interact and all of the different volunteer departments. Right. I mean, they, as Chief Killing said, they're they're accustomed to working very well together, and I don't, you know, I don't believe there'd be any uh, breakdown in the command structure uh, necessarily. But if you know, if there is another, if there is a major, uh, you know, event, uh, you know, if we have a flood or something of that nature, it would just in the, in the interim, you know, I would designate. If they're, you know, absent of, you know, council, <clears throat> you know, approving or appointing uh, the directorship. Okay. Um, anybody else from council? Comments? Um, so I, we talked about. about um, a lot of different things. Um, so I'm not, should we, uh, what's council's consensus to uh, table this and, and have more of a discussion with the administration on, on what it's gonna look like or um, are most people okay with passing this tonight? Randy, I, I actually think the only person who's brought up a, 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 a perhaps realistic objection was Bonnie when she mentioned that Chief Snyder doesn't live in the city and that we require the department he heads the to. Correct, yes, that is that is a cogent point. Um, so I don't know, Mayor Slaughter, if, if there was um, a mechanism afoot to correct that or if that's actually something we need to address a little bit further first. 
that would probably be something we need to address a little bit further uh, first, in my opinion. Okay. That, uh, yeah, that, that had not occurred to any of us, I don't think, during Tuesday's finance meeting. Um, and that, to me, is the one reason why we might not be able to um, complete this item today. Uh, um, so, I, uh, Norm, Norm, Mark. is there any? Mm, yes. Norm, is I mean, what would what would the procedure be for council to pass this without uh, for council to pass this without um, Chief Snyder li living in the city? Do we have to amend the resolution? And Norm, the only thing I would add too is that Chief Hagen didn't live in this city either. But uh, what would we need? What would we need? I, to I do think now? he did. I'm, I, th right, I think right. he did, Derek, when we initially appointed him. Correct? Yeah, yeah I'm not believe. sure. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. It was close. Yeah, maybe he did. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, I'll, yeah, I'll I, I'm just trying to, off the top of my head, I'm, I thought there was a provision, there, at one time there was a provision giving uh, the appointee time to move into the city. Um, I don't know if that's still, in, I don't have the ordinance book with me. I think there still is, Norm. I think it's 60 days, but I, the, the issue is, I believe that I don't think the chief is intending to move into the city. Mayor Slaughter, am I wrong? At this point, no, I don't believe he is at this point. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, so the provision sort of doesn't the, apply. Yeah. Well, you'd have to uh, amend the resolution to um, waive the uh, residency requirement. So then I guess that that's the sort of the sticking point at city council. I mean, A, we have the question of whether we should continue this discussion about department heads more fully. Um, with the possible look at revisiting the ordinance. B, um, do we want to weigh the residency requirement or make that part of the larger discussion? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, in summarizing this, I actually don't have a dog in this fight. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just putting it out there. I don't think we're going to solve most of that tonight. Um, my suggestion would be we at least table it. I hear crickets. If nobody's well, we, going to say, if nobody is really going to say anything, I'll make a motion that we table it. Second. Um, and if, if yeah, if we feel that that's the best route to go, then I will second that motion. Okay, motion and second to table. Um, Mrs. Frank, on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion to table passes 6 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, item four. Mrs. Frank, in short form, please. Resolution authorizing execution of agreement between ADA coordinator Janetta Green and the city of Williamsport. Um, Mayor Slaughter. Yes, what you have before you is a resolution authorizing execution agreement between uh, Ms. Green to serve as ADA coordinator in the city of Williamsport. Um, this is required for our consent decree with the Center for Independent Living um, and the federal court order um, that we entered into that we have to retain an ADA coordinator. Um, Ms. Green checks all of the boxes. Um, she's qualified, she's certified. Um, and she would be more, uh, we had a discussion around this in finance, this was reviewing finance, she would be on the policies, procedures, uh, making sure uh, all sort of the non-physical items uh, are uh, in alignment with uh, the ADA and that we're in compliance. So this was uh, reviewed by Austin and Aust Austin White solicitor uh, and in finance and sent to the full body of counsel with positive recommendations. Thank you, Mayor Slaughter. This did go to finance. And we did have, sorry, uh, and we had a conversation also around um, between the ADA coordinator um, mm -hmm. and also uh, Mr. Derry, uh, who will serve as um, 
our accessibility consultant, if he looks at the physical side, um, it's probably going to be uh, somewhere in fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range. Um, and our recommendation tonight, after speaking with Mr. Pavlock uh, the last few days, uh, is the legislative contingency line item uh, uh, for these for the ADA positions. Thank you, Mayor Slaughter. Uh, Ms. Mealy. And, and to Mayor Slaughter's point, I think this is a, a legislative contingency, one might say. <laughs> Perhaps a legal, a legal contingency <laughs> um, today. Uh, but um, yes, this, this item was uh, reviewed by the Finance Committee. We had some discussion about the specific role of Ms. Green versus Mr. Derry. Um, Ms. Green is, is more making certain that we have appropriate policies and procedures in place for serving Williams Sports Handicap Population. Mr. Derry is making certain that we have appropriate physical structures in place for serving Williams Sports Handicap Population. Um, um, Ms. Green certainly has you know, all the appropriate certifications. Um, she has estimated the time that she will need to serve um, as our coordinator um, before you know, we, before Mr. Um, Girardi is, is trained to occupy that role as about 33 hours to help us put, as we said, policies and procedures in place to oversee Mr. Um, Girardi's training, uh, et cetera. Um, and, um, and then she believes that she can do the vast majority of that work from her home base in Harrisburg and, and will not need to obviously do a, a lot of travel to and from Williamsport um, to accomplish that end goal. Uh, and, um, and so uh, the finance committee, Bonnie, I don't know why, I just can't remember anything today. Um, the finance committee forwarded this to the full body of city council with uh, some kind of recommendation, Randy. Um, <laughs> I, I, thought it was positive. I believe, Liz, I believe this was positive. This um, was a positive one. <laughs> okay. was, 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 on the funding. <laughs> uh, I thought so too, yes. With that it's caveat, though, it was that. a positive recommendation with the caveat, with the caveat. Yeah, with the caveat, with the yeah. caveat, the administration figure out a way to fund it, and they, and they have. Um, so, uh, uh, so yes, um, we forwarded this to, uh, to you all with a positive recommendation. Thanks, guys, for jogging my memory. <laughs> Ray, any other uh, comments or questions from council? Can I just add one more? And it would yeah. also be the HR. She'll work with uh, Molly Steel Shrimp also um, related to our policies, which may or may not impact our insurance side of things as well. So just ah. upgrading everything to make sure across the board we're in compliance, even as it relates to insurance and items of that matter. Yes. And, uh, and you mean a positive impact on our insurance, presumably, Derek, correct? Correct, right. That all of our okay. policies and even our insurance related items that would have a positive impact, correct? Yes. Sir. Great, fantastic. I guess the only thing I'd add to that is that um, one of her duties, this will not be an ongoing thing. Um, one of her duties will be to um, train um, a designated uh, city ADA coordinator who will be Mr. Girardi, will be trained to fulfill this position as part of his duties uh, in codes. So um, this isn't a, a black hole where we're going to be uh, throwing thousands and thousands of dollars in continually. As in going forward, once this training's done, um, we'll have an ADA coordinator on staff um, to take care of those things because it is an ongoing need to have, have that advisement and that's a uh, special um, skill and knowledge. So that's helpful. And the finance committee asked about how long that would take and Ms. Green felt confident that uh, by the end of the year, Mr. Girardi, if not sooner, um, should be able to complete yeah. that certification. That's great. Okay, if there are no further questions or comments, Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes, sorry, Dan. Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And item number five, in short. Resolution, resolution authorizing execution of agreement between accessibility consultant Mark Derry of East Lake Derry and Associates LLC and the city of Williamsport. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Mayor Slaughter. Yes, uh, very similar resolution here as the previous one. 
Um, as was noted uh, just a minute ago, Mr. Derry will serve as the accessibility consultant. Um, again, per our consent decree, um, this is needed. He's of East Lake Derry and Associates LLC. Um, and again, he's qualified and certified and his uh, roles and responsibilities will be, uh, as was noted on the physical uh, aspects of the building. Um, and one item uh, we also talked about in finance on Tuesday was uh, obviously we're gonna be, uh, we have already pretty much vacated city hall. So in the interim as that is uh, condemned until uh, future mitigation and discussions between council administration, um, that building will not be looked at at the moment uh, by Mr. Derry or Ms. Lake. Um, we'll look at train transit one, train transit two and RVT um, to make sure that they are uh, ADA compliant. So those are the buildings that Mr. Derry uh, will be inspecting for ADA compliance. Uh, this was reviewed by finance and again, forwarded with a positive recommendation with the caveat um, that we identify uh, where it would come from and again, uh, legislative contingency is our recommendation. Thank you, Mayor Sawyer. Ms. Mealy. Yes, thanks, Randy. Um, uh, finance did review this and forwarded to the full body of council with a positive recommendation to my recollection. Um, and um, uh, the, the meat of the discussion really, uh, as of right now, um, maybe this is outlined by Mayor Slaughter, the plan is to have Mr. Derry come up and inspect our existing uh, city facilities under use, which would be trade and transit one and two on RBT. Um, and we know that there are pretty much no um, handicap violations within those structures because those structures were all built um, within the last uh, 20 years. Um, and it was, it was my suggestion, and I think the other members of the finance committee agreed with me, but I'll, I'll defer to them here in a moment. Um, that if Mr. Derry is coming into the area, we make every effort to make certain he can also access both the exterior and the interior of the city hall building that we have until recently um, been utilizing so that we can get a fuller picture of um, the needs within that structure, which would help us, I think, develop a game plan moving forward for what we will be doing with, um, with, with that building as well. Um, and frankly, if, if the city were to decide that we were no longer utilizing that structure, it would probably be of some use um, to any new owners. Um, so, you know, it would be a service one way or the other. Um, but it, it seemed to me that it was likely to be a, uh, a better use of our money to have them evaluate all, this, all the structures within the city um, simultaneously at this point. Uh, aside from that, um, uh, you know, Mr. Darius said that he will make uh, the most efficient use of his time possible because he would like us to give him a positive recommendation. Um, and we appreciate that. <laughs> um, and uh, and, um, and it, it certainly seems as though everything is, is in line with this contract. Mr. Derry, um, if you're still on the call, uh, remind me, you had said that you had a, a slightly lower hourly rate for another service. Uh, it was $150 an hour, and now I cannot remember what that service was, it um, was but it was something. His, thanks, Bonnie. Liz, it was for plans. He would review plans. For a plan us. review. Yep. Um, oh, so that would, uh, in terms of um, the ramp and the elevator work that we're having done. Um, and Mr. Derry also said that he is uh, familiar with older structures and looking for workarounds that don't break the budget and don't violate um, the historical nature of older structures um, in terms of meeting handicap standards. Uh, and that, that also might serve us well in this case. Um, that said, uh, Mr. Allison, as I mentioned before, this is the full body of counsel with the possible recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mealy. Uh, other comments from council members? The only other thing is Mr. Derry said that he would try and get everything done as far as his going through the buildings within two days. And it would probably take him four days to get all the reports together to us. Mm -hmm. And and he and he's very cost conscious of what, what's going to be done here. Yes. That was uh, that was nice to hear that plan spelled out. Um Okay, I hear no other uh, comments or questions. Um, Mrs. Franklin, motion please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. 
Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, we'll move down to item 18 then, except for filing the controller's report from 6-30-21, public safety minutes of 6-08 or 6-06-21, and uh, finance minutes of 8-10-21, and the Williamsport Municipal Water and Sewer Authorities, July 28th, 21. Is there a motion and a second? So move. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments or corrections from council? Hearing and seeing none, Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Neely. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes 6-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, announcements. Our next scheduled meeting will be Thursday, September 23rd, 7 p.m. remote. Upcoming meetings, Friday, September 10th, 11 a.m. ERC. Is there a meeting tomorrow? There is not, no, we've canceled it. Okay, there is not, that's canceled. Wednesday, September 15th, 10 a.m. blighted property. Thursday, September 16th, 10.30 a.m., Zoning Hearing Board, 3 p.m., uh, Accessibility Advisory Commission. I believe that's been canceled, correct, Mr. Mackey? Yes, President Alice, that's correct. Thank you. And 4 p.m., uh, Board of Health. Tuesday, September 21st, 11.30 a.m., Public Safety. 1 p.m., Finance Meeting. 2.30 p.m., Public Works. 6.30 p.m., Hard Board Meets. Wednesday, September 22nd, 11.30 a.m., Redevelopment Authority. Um, that brings us to the end of our regular agenda. Um, other than our adjournment, are there comments from council members tonight? Randy, there was a, a couple that was on here, a mic. And John Sanders, do, are you still there? I guess he's not. I didn't know what they were there for. Um, I think they were for a couple of the COAs. I didn't, they, they their Not names weren't. Either. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to look into that. Um, oh, any comments or announcements from the administration? Hearing none, then uh, we go to comments from the public. And uh, Mr. Werfel, um, we were going to do that by phone. Is that how it's working? I'm not sure. Josh, are you there? You're you're muted if you are. I mean, I'll try and call him, Randy, to see if. Okay. There was, there was no he's, answer. He's getting right on. Okay. Sorry.
I don't think all of us have been this quiet in a long time. I'm, well, <laughs> this, there were plenty of words. This is what, this is what they call in the uh, radio industry, dead air, Bonnie. Right. Does, any, does anybody know any good jokes? <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you know, I can't think of one right now. Honest to God. <laughs> come on, John, you're the one with the trivia. Come on, you can come up with something. <laughs> John, tell him that story. That story you told me that one time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. That might not Hi. be appropriate yeah. for air. <laughs> hey, this is Josh. Hi, Josh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are, are, are there any uh, comments from the public tonight? I was not made aware of any. Um, I believe Norm had indicated that uh, the public was to email the comments in, oh. and he has not made us aware of any emailed comments. So uh, Norm's still here. Norm, were there any comments? Yeah. Uh, none that I received. Okay. All right, then. Um, hearing that. I make a motion, Randy, to, to adjourn. <laughs> That's what I've been looking second. for. <laughs> Motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Have a good night. Sweet Jesus. Good night, guys. Have a good, good night, night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Amen to that. <laughs>